The day of the crash, I gave Clark my necklace and he had it on. Yeah, I see. We can take a minute, don't worry. <laughs> and you scored your first try against Wales here yep. at BT Murrayfield. Do you remember it? Can you kind of take me to where it all happened? Well, Darcy, we're here at BT Murrayfield. It's the summer tour squad announcement. You're in that squad. Congratulations. Thank you very How much. does it feel? Yeah, no, absolutely buzzing. Um, hugely exciting for um, summer summer tour. It's going to Argentina and Chile. It's going to be very fun. Something a bit different. Uh, we've never been over there. We've never played in Chile as um, the Scotland team. So it's um, yeah, massive challenge, especially with two, um, three Argentina tests. So it's hugely exciting. Yeah, give us a little insight into how Gregor Townsend breaks the news to you. Where were you when you got the phone call? Yeah, so kind of Gregor told me um, probably last week that I was in, he was in the tra training, watching us train at Edinburgh, and yeah, he kind of told me there, and then just so I was just at training. Um, but I think when it was your first time in the squad, I can remember. Um, he phoned me, I was going up to Glasgow with my dad and he phoned me and um, I had me and my dad on the loudspeaker so um, my dad heard it as well so he was absolutely buzzing like um, so yeah it's the first, especially your first time being in the squad it's it's hugely exciting and the boys there's been a lot of um, new boys in the squad this um, tour so yeah they, they, they've worked hard this season and deserve it. Yeah and when you look at the names there's obviously a few omissions you know Stuart Hogg probably the obvious one I spoke to Gregor Townsend earlier he wants to rest these guys because obviously you've got the World Cup next year but does the squad will it feel a little bit different when you don't have some of the experienced heads there? Um, yeah probably will um, like like I said Hoggy and Fenn they've they've had a long old season and um, so they deserve that time off with the Lions and that so they've they've been going through all, all summer and um, so they deserve that time off and it just gives a chance for all the young boys to get a shot now and kind of show what they, they can do before World Cup because World Cup's just around the corner and um, this is probably a real chance, the last chance to kind of show what you can do because going into the autumn test we'll need to get a good squad out and start building that cohesion going into the World Cup. Yeah. And is that on your mind right now? Because obviously you do have this summer tour, but are you kind of talking a bit about the World Cup? And obviously you want to be there. Yeah, like, we don't talk about it, but obviously you want to be there and you know it's just around the corner. But um, yeah, like, you don't really speak about it or anything. Um, you just kind of focus on this summer tour, then autumn, and like, summer tour is going to happen really quick. It's going to be over before you know it, then you're going to be straight into the, the, autumn, uh, the autumn nation. So. Um, yeah, everything just comes around so fast with the rugby. What's it going to be like? I mean, it's about a month that you'll be with this group of guys on the summer tour. Uh, the conditions will be a bit different. I think it will be quite hot out there. There might be a bit of altitude to deal with at some point. But, you know, in terms of being grouped with these guys for that length of time, I mean, do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy getting away? <laughs> no, I mean, boys love it. It's a long time to be each other by the end. We're wanting to kill each other, probably. But, um, no, um, like... We're living, living the dream, playing, playing rugby and travelling the world and being with your best mates all the time and it's just, it's a dream, the dream job so like I said, spend time with your best mates um, for a month, you can't complain can you? Who are your best mates in the squad? So I'm real close to Blair, uh, Jamie Hodgson and uh, Luke Crosby so yeah they're real close mates, kind of, we all grew up done 20s together um, and came through the system, they bought the academies and that, so we all came through the academies together and that, so um, yeah, I can't get rid of them. Summer tour is obviously the next thing coming up, attention will then turn to the Autumn Nation series. The season ticket passes have already sold out, this stadium will be full to the brim. How does it feel when you come out at BT Murrayfield in front of a, a full stadium? What does that support from the fans mean to you? It's hard to put into words. It's, it's like, as being a Scottish boy, I grew up, all I wanted to do was to play for Scotland. And to do that, it's absolutely amazing. And, but to do it here, it's just, yeah, it's hard to stick put into words. Um, slinging flower of Scotland and when it's um, rammed is just incredible. The atmosphere is just amazing. And yeah, I just, I find it always, I find it always hard to put into words what it feels like. For those autumn, Nation series. It'll be Australia, Fiji, New Zealand, and Argentina Canada. again. Yep. Who do you most look forward to lining up against? 
I think Fiji, I always um, enjoyed playing Fiji with the sevens and that. Um, they're just so skillful players. Um, they're, they're a big, they've got a big forward pack and um, their backs are so skillful. And so yeah, I always find when I played them at the sevens was massive and I've never played them at 15. So I think it's, um, that's one team I would like to play against. Yeah. Do you ever kind of change up your style of play depending on the opponent or do you kind of just stick to your guns? This is what I'm good at. This is how I go out and play. Stick to my guns. I just fly into everything. <laughs> uh, I don't think too much and just, um, I think like for me, uh, rugby's so simple. Um, just get the ball and run. It's yeah. just my lotto, just give me the ball and I'll run. So um, I like to keep it nice and simple and nothing really changes for me. Let's rewind a little bit, Darcy, and just talk about where it all began for you because you're a Hoyk boy. Um, you know, you see so many rugby players associated with coming from Hoyk. Is there just something in the air there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, Hoyk's produced the most um, Scotland international players out at any club in Scotland. So um, I think just it's just a very passionate town about rugby. Um, like I said, when I grew up, all I ever wanted to do was play for Hoyk and then play for Scotland. Who were your inspirations growing up? So, my uncle, um, Scott, he um, played for Scotland and um, I can always mind watching him play rugby and like I can always just want to do that and I can always mind going to his house as well and he had um, a photo of him lined up against the All Blacks here and um, so I just thought that was always so cool and awesome so I was just like, I just wanted to do that as well. So um, and then Shane Williams as well, just small winger, um, kind of like myself, I kind of play similar to him and um, yeah, I just, just always looked up to him. Yeah. You're part of the academy here as well, how key was that to your development? Yeah, um, kind of the Borders Academy, the, the, the academy whole, the whole academy just started when I um, I came in, so they, it was a, it was a huge development. It was a huge step forward for the SRU, and that's kind of what the academy needed, and um, boys needed that step up because there wasn't nothing, there wasn't anything like that. So um, the academy was massive, um, and I wouldn't be here today without it. I mean, it must have been some feeling when you earned your first cap. Do you remember? coming off the bench against Wales? Yeah, down in Wales, um, yeah, it's a day I'll never forget. Um, got on and kind of, I got 10 minutes and I was just wanting to get my hands on ball and I just kind of went looking for the ball and just kind of get into the game, didn't want to let it pass by me. Um, but it was, like I said, a dream come true. Yeah. And you scored your first try against Wales here yep. at BT Murrayfield. Do you remember it? Can you kind of take me to where it all happened. I mean, I would say we can recreate it, but I'm not sure that'd be a very good standard. But yeah, do you, I mean, do you remember it? Can you kind of talk me through yeah, it a little like, bit? Yeah, like, it's weird games, like, I don't really, some games like, you kind of forget, but it's just, you always remember bits of games yeah. and stand out. And um, So where, that, where were you? The first try was um, a standout moment, and I was just out on the wing, we had a scrum on the left-hand side, and um, Finn, got the ball and then um, put it back inside to Byron McGuigan and he done an absolute amazing run into the centre of the pitch. Um, who then offloaded to Adam and then Adam gave it to me in the corner. And um, scored it, I can just remember just um, everybody piling in on top of me and that absolute buzzing. And um, that was just, a, it was level the game and um, yeah, take us into half time um, level. So yeah, like that buzz, like, to score a try at Murrayfield, it's um, the, the the roof erupted and it was yeah, it was mad. Trace for Peter Horn, little switch move, Russell on the inside. Here they go, Scotland must score here, and they do through Darcy Graham. And what a sensationally work move that was. Darcy, we've walked up to this side of the BT Murrayfield pitch because another big moment here, uh, you set up a great try for Ben White in the Calcutta Cup match against England. Again, just kind of talk us through it. What was going through your mind? What happened? Yeah, um, I just got the ball off Hoggy and um, kind of went through the two defenders and the space just opened up and I just seen the winger coming, coming forward. And like I say, I, I don't really think, I just do it, then think after. And, um, 
people were saying I teed them up perfectly, but I, d I didn't even mean to do anything. And, um, so, I, like, it just goes by so quickly, and I was just lucky enough to have Ben on my on my shoulder to give him the ball, and um, he went under the sticks to to score. So, um, it was a huge moment in the game. And of course, right at the very end of the match, there was a big moment, which I think was over this kind of side of the pitch, if I remember. Stuart Hogg boots the ball out, uh, and then the camera cuts to a little giggling Darcy. <laughs> I, I mean, do you remember that moment? Uh, that's another moment. I got a photo sent through to me, <laughs> one of my pals, where they're like, why are you laughing at Jack Noel? But I, I didn't even mean it. I was just... Um, yeah, I was just, I was just in the moment. I was just absolutely buzzing. Uh, we'd won the game, and um, I didn't even, I didn't even mean it to, to be doing it. But um, it, it kind of looks bad. But I, I promise you, I, I, I didn't mean it. And obviously, a lot is made of the Scotland England rivalry. You know, what is the difference playing in those games? Yeah, like, compared to yeah. other. No, rivalries? there is a lot more added pressure. Um, like that's the one game you, you want to play in Scotland versus England. Um, there's just so much rivalry in it, um, so much history, and um, we get to you're playing for a cup, so there's um, there is a lot of pressure in those in that game. Yeah, and you spoke about how your friend sent you a picture of that moment here when you were smiling at the end of the match. There's another photo that's been floating around. I think it was from Twickenham though, when you were actually sitting on. An England player, a couple of England players. <laughs> can, can you just explain that? Because it comes up in my Google image searching, and I just wanted to get the backstory to that. Again, I never. Like, I was just. I wasn't even a moment. It just happened. I kind of went, tried blast the rock, and then I kind of touched the nine. And the touch judge was. Um, it was like you say, don't play the nine. So I like fell back on the boy, and uh, I was like, I didn't touch him. And uh, I was I was actually laughing at the touch judge, and um, the cameras everywhere, and they you, you can't hide from you can't hide anything from the cameras, and they picked it up, and um, yeah, it kind of went it went viral, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> um, we're talking about your journey, Darcy. There was a big moment in your kind of life journey, I guess, quite recently, involving your brother Clark. Do you mind just telling me a bit about what happened with him? Yeah, um, he was in a car crash at the start. Uh, um, what kind of, I don't know. So yeah, I find it hard to talk about. Um, yeah, so he's in a car crash and um, he ended up being in hospital for four and a half months. Um, he was in a coma for four weeks and um, he had numerous injuries and then like just the hard truth is he shouldn't be here. Um, but he is. He's made a mark of all recovery and. If you seen him now, you'd, you'd never know, and it was a very tough time for me and the family, and um, it was pretty dark. But to see Clark come through the, the end, it, and if you see, like I said, you seen him now, you'd you'd never know, and he's just he's a true he's a true miracle. Yeah, and you scored a try against Wales in Wales, I think yep. it was, and you know a lot of people will have seen that try. They might not have noticed the kind of celebration at the end, though, where you kind of point up to the stands, and that was because your brother was there? Yes, yeah. um, he was down there, that was kind of his first weekend. He was away, he got away from my mum, my mum was panicking, <laughs> she was stressing, because um, he was away down to Wales with all his mates. So um, I said, I was winding them up, I was like, I'm going to score, because I knew where he was sitting, he told me where he was sitting, so I was like, I'm going to score, I'm going to point up to you. And, um, I ended up doing it, and, uh, but he missed it. He was too busy, him and his <laughs> mates were too busy celebrating, going mad, so he actually missed it. But um, yeah, it was just nice to have him at the game. Yeah, and you're a close family. Yeah, no, we're all very close. Um, like, family's everything for me, that's why I play rugby, and um, that's kind of the reason I played that Six Nations, um, because it was that time Clark was in the hospital, and it was quite. It was a good um, switch off for me. It's just that one hour of training every day, kind of get out of that nightmare. Um, that's kind of what I used it for then, just to give my mum and dad something at the end of the week to look forward to um, watching the Scotland games. So, so that's the only reason I've done it. I look back on it now as well. Like I probably should have done it. Um, mentally, I probably wasn't there, um, but. 
yeah, I just I done it for the family to give them something yeah. to, to switch off and get out of that nightmare. And I mean, a lot of people wouldn't even have a clue that you were going mm. through anything like that, particularly, you know, just the normal Scotland fan. I certainly didn't know. Um, you said it there, was rugby a bit of an outlet for you, though, when you're going through such a tough thing? Oh, it was. Um, like... <laughs> Yeah, like we were like in the, we were in the house for pretty much two weeks. Every time the phone call went, we were we were getting physically sick because we didn't know what was at the end of that phone call. Um, so yeah, to come into camp, I was just being with the boys. It kind of did, did take your mind off things and that, but and it kind of was an outlet for for me um, to go out train. Like I just said, like you just for, kind of forgot about it. But then as soon as training finished, I was straight off the straight off the pitch and on my phone to see what the news was and that. So, um, yeah, like, uh, all the boys a lot um, because they they did pull me through that um, dark time. Yeah, and how is he now? I mean, you said he's he's recovering, he's recovered. How, how is he doing? He's, he, honestly, he's amazing. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's my new hero now. Like, what he's went through is absolutely incredible. And, like, he's just battled through everything and, um, and like I said, if I brought him here and round, you'd never know. He's got a, he's an amazing scar that runs up around his ear and up over his head. Um, so he loves that when he gets a wee skin fade, you can see it. So he loves that. Um, it's his wee battle wound, he says. So um, no, that, like I said, apart from that, you, you'd never know. And you've now set up a clothing company we with have. him with a quite a significant name. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Um, we kind of started it up um, for Clark to return back to work because um, it was just kind of he was getting bored in the house. Like it'd been a year and um, he was struggling to get like he had nothing. Um, he was just getting up and he had nothing. So he started it up for um, Raphael. So everything's got a meaning in it. So the Raphael is the angel of healing. And um, the day Clark's crash. So before Christmas, I got a necklace from my sister and it had a lovely meaning to them. No matter where you go, you'll always have an angel looking out for you and that. So the day of the crash, I gave Clark my necklace and he had it on. Yeah, I see. We can take a minute, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you for talking about All right. it. Um, so yeah, so the whole hospital, he had the necklace wrapped around his arm or on, uh, on him and um, to this day now we've all got them, so me and my brother, all of my brothers have got them. Um, so just three. Oh, wow. So we've all got them now, it's quite, um, so me and my brother and Brody, my other brother has got them and my mum and sister have got wee bracelets with the, the angel wings on, so it's very special now to the family. So. The clothing business is like Raphael, the angel of healing. Um, then the day under it was the day he walked out of hospital. And um, everything just stems from that, this um, necklace. So um, it's been going really well. And like I said, it's, it's kind of done his job because Clark's now back to work. Um, that's what we set up for, is for his return to work. And um, it's done his job, but it's just kind of continuing. Everybody's kind of it's still going really well and um, people just really liking the clothes so um i'm just gonna keep it going it's now it's actually i'm kind of enjoying it now yeah. because i've got something outside of rugby um i don't i'm not just going home sitting gaming anymore i've actually i can go home i can work um and it's just something nice to have something to switch off from rugby now yeah. um so it's i probably need it just as much as clark did yeah well, Darcy, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing that story and showing your necklace as well today. And all the best with the future and the, the summer tour. Thank you.